Yeah, so I'm here supporting the coaches and the players. Um, and there's probably two main parts. It's about supporting their mental health, to make sure they're at their best when they're coaching or playing and also supporting them in terms of mental performance. So I think uh, it's a fantastic role. It's a lot of fun. And I think we've got an amazing coaching group who are really driven to improve their coaching. So I love working one-on-one -on -one with the coaches about developing their coaching skills, but also bring them together as a group to solve problems and to get them to think about how we create an environment for the players to really thrive. And with the players, it's mainly one-on-one -on -one work, but also some small group stuff really helping them get clear about how they want to play the game and what are some mental skills, tools, techniques they can use to stay aligned to that for as often as possible. So um, it's a fantastic role. It's a lot of fun, that's for sure. Probably like everyone, I fell in love with cricket very early on in life. I was playing in the backyard with my brothers and my sister and my uncle and um, just fell in love with the game very early and played cricket right through my junior years, um, right through as an adult as well. And as soon as I finished playing cricket, I moved straight into coaching. Um, and worked really hard on my coaching and got great opportunities through Cricket Australia to be able to do some coaching stuff. And uh, parallel to that, I have my own career, which is um, as a mental health clinician in forensics, which is probably a little bit different for most sporting organizations. Um, but my expertise is really in understanding behavior. So what drives behavior? What sits underneath behavior? And in forensics, we're really looking at the study of dysfunctional behavior. So trying to intervene into what leads to people to do what they do and then help them have the skills to be able to make positive changes in their life going forward. And I basically uh, merged those two together at some point in my life about a decade ago where I started uh, bringing that knowledge of behavior into the world of sport and high performance. And the same process though, understanding what drives behavior, what sits underneath the behavior and learning how to intervene in a way that the evidence suggests is gonna be helpful for that person to simply make better decisions going forward. So it's probably a combination of things. Growing up in Melbourne, in Australia, passionate about sport and cricket, and then my clinical experiences in forensics come together really nicely, and it's, uh, it's an unbelievable opportunity now. It's a great privilege to be able to do roles like this um, in sport. I think it wasn't too long ago that it was a bit foreign to have a role like mine in place, and I think that there is a greater understanding now. I think there's a couple of things. There's an understanding that being a professional athlete or a professional sport at really high levels comes with a certain amount of stress and there's mental health implications that come from being um, in that sort of stress. And so I think that sporting organisations like Chennai, you know, really professional outfits and franchises, they're just wanting to support their people as best they can and so they're acknowledging that there is a degree of stress. So we just want to make sure that we're supporting people through that journey. And the second thing is, Probably more excitingly for a role like mine is, I think there's an acknowledgement now that when you get to a certain level with sport, everyone's talented and everyone works hard. It's your ability to develop mental skills that actually separates you from your competitors. And I think people are now aware of that and we don't want to leave that to chance. The days of cricketers only working on technique are so far gone. It's players are absolutely wanting to work not only on technique and their bowling action, they want to work on the inner game as well and they want to be guided with that. So working with coaches to be able to coach that better, working with players to be able to develop that side of their game. I think those two things now, professional organizations are on top of. The awareness of the stress of being a professional athlete, but also the advantage, the, the competitive advantage that comes with developing people's, the mental side of their game. So we talk about a lot of things. A lot of it is very individualized. I think a lot of the, maybe some of the more general things we speak about are, things like confidence. So a lot of players want to talk about confidence. So we have these great discussions around like, where does confidence come from? Does it come from inside of you? Does it come from outside of you? Do you rely on other sources to give you confidence? And then we move the conversation towards, so how do you direct your internal narrative, your self-talk, to be able to truly generate confidence in any environment? And that's what we want. We want players to be able to be confident in any game, at any venue, in any match scenario. So we speak a lot about confidence. We speak a lot about things like owning the space between deliveries. So a lot of players get a lot of comfort in creating routines that help them come back to what they can control between balls, whether it's a bowler walking back to the top of his mark or a batsman taking 10 seconds between deliveries, trying to take full control of that time between deliveries so they can arrive at the next ball completely locked in in their ideal competitive mindset. There are a couple of things we talk about. And to be honest, here in Chennai, most players just want to talk about how to be like MS Dhoni, how to be calm under pressure, and that won't be a surprise to anyone. I think he's just one of the most remarkable athletes uh, that we've ever had in the sport. He's obviously a great of cricket, and I feel very lucky to have been able to kind of get to know him through my journey here and 
Um, he's one of the best embodiments of mental skills you could ever hope for. And so it's a real plus. Every room that he's in here within the walls of Chennai is karma when he's in the room. And his ability to give to his teammates and help them develop their mental game is amazing. A recent game um, where he was batting, uh, maybe I won't say who with, but um, his ability to calm his teammate by telling him to use some breathing to bring his heart rate down while they were out in the middle of the game, trying to win the game for Chennai is amazing. Um, amazing for that other player. And even just simple things like being able to understand that the game is actually out of our control. The outcome we can't control. There's too many other variables like umpires and opposition and the weather and the pitch. We actually can't control the outcome. If we could, we'd win every game that we ever play. And his ability to just very lightly accept that we can't control the outcome of games. All we can control is how we step into this next delivery and all of our focus into how we arrive at this next ball. His ability to help his teammates have that same orientation, it's a remarkable skill. So I think he's, uh, we're very lucky to have one of the greatest of all time um, here in the franchise, that's for sure. People are more distracted than ever before and uh, mobile phones have made it so that our attention span is very short. We don't multitask, we don't focus on more than one thing, but we focus on one thing for a very short period of time and then we move to the next app or the next social media account. And so we move very quickly. So our ability to sustain concentration on one thing and T20 is only a short game compared to test cricket, but you still have to be able to focus for extended periods. And that's something that I'm worried about with the next generation of cricketers coming through is growing up with mobile phones. We're actually trained, we're de-skilling when it comes to a sustained attention. So practices like meditation, like mindfulness, like actually being able to sit in your own space without a phone is becoming increasingly difficult for that reason. Maybe I might take a performance lens and then a, a mental health lens. The performance lens, uh, the game is absolutely all about, at this level, it's about being present in the game. And it's about letting the last ball go, flushing the last ball, the last over. In fact, flushing every other moment of your life to date and only being focused on the present moment, this delivery, having a this ball focus. And that's a really difficult thing to do. It's easy to say at any point in your life, you can practice being focused in the present moment, but most of our lives we're actually really distracted either by the past, things that have already happened, we get stuck and we bring that into this moment, or we're focused ahead of time to outcomes. Focusing on outcomes is the biggest inhibitor to performance. So just from a performance perspective, any aspiring cricketer, just practicing being present is the number one skill that I would say is worth practicing. And the good news is you can practice at any time. When you're eating, when you're talking, when you're listening to music, when you're watching a movie, whatever it is that you're doing, just being fully in that and noticing when your mind drifts off and bringing it back. That's the exact skill that athletes are trying to do when they're playing for Chennai in the high stakes IPL games. We notice when we get distracted and we just bring our focus back to what's important in this moment. So if you're gonna train one thing in terms of the mental game, I think it would be just being locked into the moment um, and bring that into your practice sessions. From a mental health point of view, I think it would be around managing expectations. A lot of elite athletes, not just here at Chennai, but across the world, athletes that I work with, they just set unbelievably high expectations of themselves. They get expectations from others, but the expectations that other people put on them, in my experience, is never as high as the expectations they set for themselves. So there's this internal standard that really high performing athletes are setting for themselves. And we need to be careful about that because it drives really high performance. But there's also a downside to it, and that is that they can be very quickly self-critical because they never meet the standards they set for themselves. So it drives high performance because they keep working, they keep striving, they keep feeling like they need to be better. But there's a downside in that they can become very self-critical and it leads towards what we call perfectionistic uh, thinking patterns. I need to be perfect. And so it's a, it's a bit dangerous and we need to be really careful. And again, it's not just cricketers, it's all sports, all athletes, and it's actually high performing people in life as well. I have a very common thinking pattern. We call it unrelenting standards. So the antidote is to be able to have a bit of self-compassion, to be able to say to myself, I'm gonna go for it in this game of cricket or in life, but I'm not gonna tie my self-worth to the outcomes that I'm trying to achieve. I'm gonna enjoy the process of getting better every day. So being able to have a bit of self-compassion about you know, maybe what I'm doing is good enough and maybe it's okay. And also being able to embrace and celebrate imperfection. None of us are perfect. The game is messy. So being able to embrace that and just accept that the game is never gonna be perfect is a couple of ways of managing that expectation that I think has the potential to be a really stressful thing if it's not very carefully managed in, in particularly in high performing people.
it's hard to believe it when um, the results aren't coming for us, but it's an inherent human thing to be motivated intrinsically to be better, to be a better version of ourselves today as compared to yesterday. And that's across the board, all humans, but it's a really loud voice in high-performing athletes. They feel very self-critical if they're not improving every single day. And if they can't honestly sit there and say to themselves, I'm getting better, then they have trouble sitting with that. So I've got a number of projects around the world and they're all great fun, but I don't think I've ever involved in anything quite as passionate as Chennai Super Kings. I remember my first experience four years ago, um, arriving, going to Chapauk and just seeing a sea of yellow. And I just couldn't believe um, the support that Chennai had. And then just watching as we then moved to Delhi and it's the same, uh, even at Delhi's home ground, it's a sea of yellow. And then last year going to Dubai, uh, it's just yellow everywhere we go. And it's um, just one of the most passionate franchises, I think, in world sport. I honestly believe that. I think it's one of the most loved franchises in all of sport, not just in cricket. So it's very easy to kind of see the joy that it brings a huge number of people and probably a number of people that we probably don't quite grasp. There's so many people that follow the game, particularly in India. So to be able to have a small influence on a player that is then bringing that sort of joy or a coach to a huge number of people, it's actually really easy. And the other thing for me is it's just a very interesting, um, professionally it's very interesting. We've got players from the West Indies, from England, South Africa, New Zealand. It's, it's just, it's a crazy mix of people who come together and very quickly form a tight bond as Chennai Super Kings players and coaches. And so I love that they come from different lenses. I come, they, they come from different perspectives, but cricket brings them together. And so I love um, understanding, like them teaching me how they derive meaning from what they do and how they bring purpose to what they do and how cricket is an expression of that. It's a, it's a, it feels like a, a real privilege for me. So um, I don't have to look too far in terms of purpose with this role. Um, and I certainly feel like being here, I'm getting better at what I'm doing every day because of the environment that we're, that we've got here. So certainly a lot of fun.